Welcome to episode 6 of the Houdini VEX series. Now that we have talked about the basic elements of VEX individually, let's become more practical by taking a closer look at some useful functions with real scenario examples. Neighbors and near points are two separate functions that return arrays of points. An array is another data type, it is basically a list that can hold multiple values of one type. The same function are available as neighbor and near point to return a single integer point number. The main difference between both is that neighbor will return a point number of the closest connected point of an input point, connected by in this case by an edge. Near point will return a point number of the closest point in space. So connectivity based on connected points and proximity based on nearness in space. Let's jump into Dini and test one after another with a given example where this might be helpful. So first let's see how we write arrays, either as variables or attributes. To write an array integer variable, let's type int, then the name, and then we have the squared brackets, equals, and then we divide each list item by a comma. So to write an attribute, let's call it i, then we have the squared brackets, add, and then pts, and let's just put our variable inside and have a look at our geometry spreadsheet. You can see that each item of the list is divided by a comma. Let's take a look at our near point function first. I have an attribute wrangle with two inputs. First is this geometry, and the second one are those scattered points, which have a little bit of movement added to them. So in here, the first thing we do is we declare a new variable, integer variable, called near points, which will store the point number of the closest point on the first of the first input. So this is the input zero, and this is the first input, the scattered points. For that function, we only need a geo handle and also a position. Now we can get from our new uh, point number, we can get the position. So I store a vector variable near point position, and I use the point function to get the position from my nearest point. Now we can calculate the distance between our position from each from each point to the closest point on the uh, of the scattered points. We can also add a small displacement and multiply it with our color so they are coming out a little bit. Now we have our scatter node and we can adjust the scatter and it should work procedurally. Now to our near points. What we want to do is create this infection system. Basically we have our input geometry again, we scatter some points onto it, and we create an infected attribute. It's just an integer attribute called infected set to 1, just for one point. So this is our start point. And now for each, each point we have in here, we want to get a number of, of neighbors. So you can see here that we have 10 neighbors, we can also adjust it to 3 neighbors see what we did here. First, if we have our near points function, we need a max distance value and a max points value. So what we did is we created two variables, max dist and int points, and set up channels for them so we can easily control them down here. Now we add an integer array and the near points function will now store with a geo handle, a given position, our max distance and max points the point numbers in here, in this attribute. You might wonder why it's a plus one for the max points. This is because it will also add the point itself. So if we comment this one, you can see that it also finds itself always in here, but we only we don't want it to have uh, itself also listed in this. So what we can do is we can just use the remove value function we can give it an array and also a point, a value in this case, in this case it's the point number, to remove from our uh, array. So now that each of these points knows its near points, we can just say in a solver, if you are, if for each point, if you're infected, if infected attribute equals one, for each point in this array, so in this case, those three values, set the point attribute infected to one. Next time it runs over it, of course we don't have one only infected, we have four infected. And it goes on and on like this 
And now we can just set the infected attribute to the color attribute to visualize it and play it back. And we have an affected system. So you can obviously change the max points. If we have more point numbers, it will infect more points, so it will be faster. Let's have a look at the neighbors function. So what we want to do with this example is we have a gradient on our mesh and we can get a, a direction vector from the gradient. So for example, if I set it to x and compute the range, you can see that the attribute now knows where the gradient is going. Now this is the great thing with connected points. Let's see how we did that. First of all, we have a gradient on the mesh. And now we want to get the color attribute stored in a variable, the position stored. And now we want to get our neighbors. So we create an array, store our neighbors in here, neighbors, all that are connected to our point. So let's take a closer look. For example, this point has quite a lot of neighbors. So this list of this point will all contain the point numbers of those points. So if we have all of those points stored in here, we create two empty arrays, one empty float array and one empty vector array. So now for each point in our neighbors, so in our list, so we go over all of these, we want to store the color and also the position in variables. And now we want to uh, calculate the weight and append, append is a function to add a value to an array. Like remove value we had just before, you can also append um, values to arrays. So we have the weights array in here and the weight is the value we add. The same with the directions. So now we can create a new vector attribute, which is the sum of the directions divided by the sum of the weights. Let me quickly show you and visualize the attribute. You can see that now the, the attribute, the direction attribute, knows where the gradient is going. If we change the um, if we change the gradient, it also knows where the gradient is going. Now uh, I added all of this into a volume and used the volume trails and animated them. So now we have these lines growing on our geometry. In the next episode, we will take a look at how to create and modify groups.